All right, so begins the acid bases chapter. Uh, in my class, this is part of the solutions chapter, since we're still going to use molarities and things like that. Um, I apologize for the really crooked video. I'm just having problems today, it seems. So, um, this section, how high can I go? All right, there we go. Uh, this section will be kind of a basic introduction to acids and bases. So, uh, first it helps to define these two words. Acids and bases, or excuse me, acids first. We have two definitions. First is a guy named Arrhenius. Ooh, I left out the N. Anyway, Arrhenius says that an acid is anything that gives off a hydrogen ion. And this is the typical definition of an acid. But it doesn't always cover all of our bases. So we also have a second definition that says that an acid is something that accepts electrons. A third definition even says that this is something that donates a proton, since that hydrogen atom there, hydrogen, uh, with no electrons is nothing more than a proton nucleus. So between these two definitions, Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry, we cover most of our substances that can be classified as acids. And generally speaking, anything acidic is going to be indicated by a red color on a pH scale or a pOH scale, so you're looking for that red. Acids will turn blue litmus paper red, and also the universal indicators will also turn a red color for our stronger acids. A couple of examples for you. The common ones, nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, both of them have that H in the front there that they will give off when they're dissolved into water. A base, on the other hand, according to Arrhenius, gives off a hydroxide, OH-. So these would be things like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. But you have some substances like ammonia, NH3. Well, it has no hydroxide to give off. So now we really need that Bronsted-Lowry definition that talks about donating electrons to be shared. Acids, or excuse me, bases generally are blue. So on your pH scale or your pOH scale, you're looking for that blue color. Again, a red litmus paper will turn blue in the presence of a base. Your universal indicators will also turn blue in the presence of a base. Just to give you a quick uh, example of that NH3, what actually happens with ammonia. Your NH3, if you think about the Lewis dot structure here, your NH3 has this extra pair of electrons up top. And this extra pair of electrons, negatively charged electrons, sees that positive H plus floating around in solution. So my base is going to donate these two electrons to be shared with this hydrogen. So we're going to form an attraction, a bond here between these two. So no electrons, he has two. And we end up sharing those two electrons to form a bond with this extra H. This is how your ammonium, our positive ion, forms. Is It's an ammonia, a base, that has picked up an extra hydrogen. So since we have things reacting, we need to have a couple of more names. When an acid reacts with a base, it forms two things on the other side of our equation, on our product side. The first one is called a conjugate acid. This is something that has gained that hydrogen. So in this example here, my NH3, this was my base. This was acting as a base. My H plus up here was acting as my acid, according to my Bronsted-Lowry and my Arrhenius definitions up here. After the reaction, now my NH4 plus here, since it gained a hydrogen, is called a conjugate acid. A conjugate acid, it used to be a base, but it has picked up an H+. Plus. The flip side is a conjugate base, which is something that has lost the H+. Plus. So, for example, here's another one. Our hydrochloric acid, if the name wasn't a clue, it's going to give up this H+, plus here. So it's behaving as an acid. Sodium hydroxide has this OH that it's going to give up. 
makes it a base. When these two things react, these two substances over here are also going to have acid and base qualities. So anything that gained our H+, let's go find that H+. There it is. My OH has picked up my H+, which makes this right here my conjugate acid. It used to be a base, remember, that OH. Now we need to go find what lost my H+. My CL lost the H+, making it my conjugate base, which was once an acid. A couple of more things that I want to mention before I wrap up this video. We keep talking about H+, in acid solutions, and actually H+, doesn't exist. Instead, we have this thing called hydronium. So when we put an acid in water, it's going to dissociate. It's going to break apart into the hydrogen ion, the H+, and the Cl. But this doesn't exist for long. If you remember, water is a particularly polar molecule. We've got this partial negative up here, partial positive down here. This partial negative is going to see that positive up there in that H+, and it's going to grab a hold of that H+, immediately, as soon as this acid dissociates, forming that hydronium ion, that H3O+. So H+, does not exist in acid solutions. You're actually looking for this hydronium. So even though we may refer back to H+, or H+, concentrations in subsequent videos, please remember that hydronium is actually the ion that we're talking about. <clears throat> let's see, do I want to finish this up? Yeah, let's go ahead and finish this up. So, the strength of an acid or a base, you're looking at how much they dissociate, how much they fall apart. Notice I put strength in quotation marks because typically when people talk about the strength of an acid, they're talking about how well it can eat through metal or if it can eat the flesh off your bones, but that's actually not right. That doesn't have anything to do with it. So instead, you're looking at how much something will dissociate. So strong acids and strong bases will dissociate completely. There is no HCl left in the solution. Once you introduce this into water, this is all that's left. Your strong acids or your strong bases will dissociate completely. All ions left, none of this solid together. On the flip side, your weak acids and bases will not dissociate completely. This means that when I put acetic acid into a solution, into water, I get some dissociation, some ions, but not much. There's mostly this molecule still floating around in the water. So the weaker the substance, the less it dissociates and breaks apart. The stronger the acid or the base, the more it's going to dissociate. Later on, we'll come up with a number that will allow you to, de to decide whether or not something is a strong acid and base, but that comes in a bit. In the next video, we'll talk about measuring our acids and our bases, pH, pOH, that kind of thing. So, see you then.